Now, I think what would be really helpful, and just at least for me, and hopefully the audience, is can we compare this to other currencies and some of the similarities, differences, benefits, or maybe an easier way to ask it is, is, is this money? Is Bitcoin money? Yeah. In this this, in this a, is money. We call it money. You're holding What are you holding? I have a thing? quarter here. Okay. This is a piece of metal. Yeah. We call it money. Is Bitcoin mm -hmm. in the same category? Can it do the same stuff as that? Mm. Well, traditionally, money has filled three roles. Um, the first role is as a store of value. So when you um, have wealth and you want to keep having wealth, um, you store that value in something. Um, mm -hmm. Some things are very bad stores of value. For example, eggs. Um, yes. If you stored all your wealth in eggs, all your wealth would be gone in a couple of weeks. So you don't yep. want to do that. You want to store it in something that will hold its value reasonably well. Um, also, money as a medium of exchange. So it's something that you can trade back and forth with other people. Um, so if you say sell eggs, you will receive something back from that. Um, now, if you wanted, suppose what you wanted to do was buy a house and what you sold was eggs, that would be a lot of eggs. Mm -hmm. And probably yeah. whoever you're trying to buy the house from doesn't need that many eggs. <laughs> that would be very inconvenient yeah. for them, for you to give them the value of the house in eggs. So um, we've settled on using other things as proxies for value. And traditionally, that's been things like seashells, gold, um, paper currencies backed by governments. And so the, the final thing money serves as is a, a unit of account. So yeah. you want to be able to compare the value of eggs with the value of a house. Eggs are worth, you know, 0.6 of this, and a house is worth 200,000 of it, whatever that thing is. Um, so Bitcoin can it's it has numbers associated with it so it can serve as a unit of account we can talk about how many bitcoin um it can serve as a store of value in the sense that you can trade dollars for it and um you or can eggs. or eggs <laughs> or uh, eggs. transact with it um, and you can send it to and from other people so it seems to serve these three functions now the one question is how well it does that mm -hmm. Um, how well does it serve as a store of value? How well does it serve as a medium of exchange? And these get into practical questions about how much it costs to send it, um, how easy it is to store it, how well it retains its value across time and across space. And then you have to start comparing it with, with other offerings. So it mm -hmm. seems like it, it could be a money. It, it can fill these roles. And then you want to start comparing it to other things that could fill these roles and see how well does Bitcoin do this compared to other things. And then there are, of course, other questions that you you might have about what kind of money is the best money. For example, um, how easy is it to travel with? How easy is it for someone to take it from you? Um, and we could we'd compare Bitcoin along these lines as well. Brad, I want to pick up on something you said. When describing money's roles, you gave various examples of money, seashells, gold, paper, and so on. And I, I think it's useful to, to look at those examples and to notice this. It's a highly contingent matter what we use as money. It's up to us, really. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the Vogue way of describing that is that money is socially constructed. That is, it's a decision we together make socially what to count as money. So in a prison, cigarettes might literally be money. That might be the way that you denominate your value, so it's your unit of account. It might be the way you exchange value, and it might be the way you store value. It really is money. And outside mm -hmm. of a prison, maybe not. So once you have that in view, I think it opens up this possibility of or this very good question, well, what, what should be our money? And, and there, it's not just a practical question of what is better at fulfilling these various roles. That's a kind of technical question. What is divisible? What is easily tradable? Mm -hmm. But also, well, th think about cigarettes. Should that be money? Well, if you think cigarettes are bad for people, that might be a reason to not use cigarettes as money. So there, there are normative questions that immediately come to bear once you reflect on this, uh, mm -hmm. both the contingency of what we use as money, the fact that this is up to us, and also the obvious fact that some things look to be bad.
to be to, to be used as money. And you know that invites this question: Well, are there other things that are better? Suppose we had a cigarette-based economy. Could we make the world better by replacing it with a gold-based economy or with mm -hmm. something else? And Bitcoin, as I think of things, is an answer to that question that adds this extra little detail. Our world is increasingly digital. Should we adopt a digital native store of value, unit of account, medium of exchange? And Bitcoin invites us to think, well, maybe yes, and maybe this could be it. Yeah, go ahead. Can I ask, Bitcoin was first to the game, or at least it was the first crypto that had, you know, household name is that recognition. True? Is, I, that, is that the first? Oh, no, that had recognition, oh, name okay. recognition, I'm saying. Um, you just mentioned that it, it seem, you seem pretty optimistic. Correct me if I'm wrong. You seem pretty optimistic that this will be adopted widespread as a legitimate currency. Um, do you think that Bitcoin is the best or, or was it sort of it's just the most popular name we're familiar with? Are there benefits that other coins offer that Bitcoin doesn't? I think of Bitcoin in terms of optimism about adoption. Mm. If there is a case for optimism, it's about Bitcoin as a base settlement layer. Let, let me say what that means. That's a fancy term, perhaps. Some of you, uh, all of us maybe, have interacted with SWIFT or with the uh, Fed wire system. We wired money from one bank account to another. Yeah. That is a base settlement layer, fairly close to being a base settlement layer. It's the way that value is transferred from one bank to another. We don't interact with that system very often because it's cumbersome, it's high fees, it takes hours to settle, sometimes several business days, yeah. but it's extremely secure. Bitcoin is like that in some respects. It's a it's an extremely secure way to settle value because it's hard to reverse transactions once they've taken place in the blockchain. It's very, very difficult, very expensive computationally to cheat the system, nearly impossible after a few hours. On the other hand, like Swift, it's high fee. You have to pay the miners fees for them to update the blockchain for you. So if there's a case for Bitcoin adoption optimism, I think of it as... Bitcoin is being a base settlement layer on top of which live other layers, just as a Visa and credit card, small microtransactions with your Visa card live on top of the Fedwire system. Yeah, and Bitcoin, right. has, Bitcoin has an analogy to that. It's called Lightning. It's a network that lives on top of Bitcoin that isn't quite as secure and isn't quite as well understood, but it's lightning fast, less than a second, and it's virtually free to transfer Bitcoins via Lightning. So that's great for buying coffee. Bitcoin at the base level is not good for buying coffee. You'll pay ten dollars in transaction fees. Like yeah, right. Free. So as I think of things, if, if we're trying to assess Bitcoin as money, we have to think: well, what kind of money would it be? I would think of it as being a base settlement layer money, not as buy your coffee with this stuff.